Welcome back to Math for Game Developers, where we are recording today's video on stream, live, and hopefully I don't screw up and have to do 20 takes. Um, and last time we were talking about how no floating point numbers come in formats. So for example, just like this, uh, the floating point number A is going to be represented by a significant part and an exponent part, and B will have a different significant and a different exponent. Now let's say I want to multiply A times B. Well then, just copying from this over here, I'm going to want S1 times 10 to the E1 times uh, S2 times 10 to the E2. Now this is just like scientific notation and um, if you covered that in grade school, great. Otherwise, I will put a link to the Khan Academy below. But it's pretty straightforward. You get S1, S2 times 10 to the E1 plus E2. And now I have another number that's back in the floating point format. Here's my new significant. Here's my new exponent. And so if I want to know what C is equal to, C is equal to A times B, then... This will be C, and it will be equal to S3 times 10 to the E3, where S3 is just, you know, these things are equal, these things, <laughs> and uh, these two things are equal. So now I've made a new floating point number. It's, uh, this is what the hardware does every time you multiply floating point numbers. So let's do it again, except now let's add a plus B and I'm going to use some actual values so that we can see what's going on. I'm going to use 5 times 10 to the 8 and I'm going to add it to 2 times 10 to the negative 4. Uh, and now I can't just go ahead and do this addition because I don't have like terms. Here I have a 10 to the negative 8 and here I have a 10 to the negative 4. So the first step we need to do is make like terms. And I'll just do that really quick so that we can see what I'm doing. Times 10 to the eight, times 10 to the negative eight, times 10 to the negative four. And now I have a 10 to the negative eight in both terms and I just take this these extra exponents and combine them into the significant. So that will give me five times 10 to the eight, that hasn't changed, plus two, uh, okay, hold on. We need 12 zeros plus point one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven two times ten to the eight and now I can actually add these guys so we get five point one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven times ten to the eight, but we learned in our last video that floating point numbers have a limited amount of precision and in single precision floating point numbers we can only store one two three four five six seven eight digits and so everything after this zero right here gets cut off now this is a problem because you'll see before that uh, we had five times ten to the negative eight we added two times neg ten to the negative four but the result is that we still only have five times ten to the negative eight um, so it's like we added zero, but we didn't. We added an actual thing that was completely lost by the calculation. And this is a, an example of round off error, which is the first type of error that, um, that we're gonna be encountering in our, in our uh, adventures in numerical analysis. So um, there are, this is, so this is a problem because if you have a very large game world, then if you're near the origin, if you're near like the 0, 0, 0 coordinate, then all the numbers that you use to do your calculations are small and, and there are no big numbers. And so that's fine. But then as you go out into the very far distances of the game world, then you start getting some big numbers in there and you want to add a small number to them to make the player move a little bit to the right. And you don't have enough precision to do that. So this is like a limitation for how big game worlds can physically be without going through loading screens or something like that. So there are a few operations to watch out for when you're using floating point numbers. One is doing a big number plus a small number. One is a number 
I'm going to call it A minus B, where A is about equal to B. And this will suffer the same sort of problem. You'll get, um, you'll get inaccurate results. Uh, and then someone in the stream pointed out and that I'm very appreciative for, if you have A plus B plus C, that is not always exactly equal to A plus B plus C with the parentheses in a different place. Uh, so these are some things that you can do to that you should that you should try to avoid um, and keep in mind when you're using floating point numbers. Most of the time they won't work. They won't be an issue, but every so often they'll come and bite you. And so it's good to be aware of them. Now let's go to the code section and look at some actual floating point numbers at work. So here we have basically a playground where we can screw with a bunch of floating point numbers and see uh, how they work and what they do. Um, and this is already compiled and ready to go. So I'm going to go to the debugger. And this again is a command line debugger. So don't be too worried. I'm just going to start the program and I'll step us through the process. So first I'm going to assign a big number to a floating point and then a very small number to a floating point. Um, and that's A and B. And let's see the contents of A and B now. One is 1,000 and one is 0. .00009999, which is weird because we tried to assign 0. .0001, but we assigned, but what we got is something slightly different. And this is because computers uh, store floating point numbers in base two and not all numbers in base 10 are exactly representable in base 2 with the amount of precision that floating point numbers have. So that's something to be aware of. Most of the time it's not going to be a big issue, but sometimes it is. So let's see the result here when we add A and B, and we have C is now 1000.00012. And uh, that's weird because a was supposed to be less than the, the value we put into it was 0001. But when we add the two together, we get something bigger than 1000 plus 0001. It's slightly bigger by, you know, a very small amount. So floating point operations can be a little bit wonky in the last digits. Um, and that's something to watch out for. Again, usually it's not a big deal, but then when you need to know about it, it, uh, it's, 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 happy to, it's good to be aware of this stuff. So we're going to add one more zero right here just to see what happens. Just to make the difference between the big number and the small number a little bit bigger. And you can see that now the point zero 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 one has been shifted out of our result entirely and just lost completely and we have A plus B equals A. So there you go, something to look out for. Let's continue on. I'm gonna assign A, B, and C in this way. Uh, I don't know why I put B before A, but I did it that way. Um, and then I'm gonna add them together in two different orders. And I'm gonna exploit what we just talked about, how a big number and a small number can lose the small number in the addition. I'm gonna exploit that to get two different results in D1 and D2. And let's see what they are. Here's D1, 0. 0.00109 and some junk, and here's D2, 0. 0.00107 and some junk. So not only is it inaccurate, but it's inaccurate in only the third digit, which is a pretty uh, significant difference. So this, again, is only happening this way because I found specific examples that, um, that exploit this difference. Usually it's not a problem. So, but again, this is how floating point numbers work something to be aware of. So continuing down in my program, I'm going to assign a the value negative one and b the value zero. And then I'm going to divide a divided by z. Now, what result am I going to get? As you know, from math class, a divided by b is undefined. It does not have an answer. But when we're dealing with floating point numbers, uh, it does have an answer. Your computer will assign the value infinity, because I had negative one, it, it assigns negative infinity to this number. Now, how can that be that we have a floating point number, which is just a bunch of digits in the computer, and it represents something other than a number? 
That's because when they decided how floating point numbers would work, they decided that certain bit patterns would represent special values. And this is the first of those special values, infinity. And infinity has a weird property that it is bigger than any other number. If you take the maximum number that can be represented by a floating point, and I'm gonna store that in this variable max, actually, let's see how large it is. It is about three times 10 to the positive 38. It's a huge number, um, but I'm gonna to test to see if C, which currently has, oh, it currently has negative infinity. Let's make it positive infinity and run this again. Now it's positive infinity and positive infinity is larger than the largest value that floating point numbers can store. So as you can see, it took the first branch, which prints bigger. There's bigger right there. So that's interesting. Now remembering that C is, uh, is a, and now I have to turn this back to negative. <laughs> Should have planned this better, I think. So let's put that back to negative. Um, so I'm going to put the value 5 in D and then C is back to being negative infinity. And what happens when we take 5 and divide it by negative infinity? That should make no sense if you think about it in a purely math term, like purely in math terms. But the people who made um, floating points decided that it should be equal to print E negative 0. Wait, what's negative zero? What, what does that mean? That makes absolutely no sense. Zero isn't positive or negative, everybody knows this. But floating point numbers actually have two different representations for positive and negative zero. Positive and negative zero will always give you the same result if they're used in a computation. It's just kind of an oddity that sometimes for very specific algorithms can matter. Uh, but in this case, it, you know, most of the time, again, I feel like I've said this four times by now, most of the time it won't really matter terribly much, but this time, um, but, you know, in a very rare occasions, it, it can matter. Okay, fine. So now what happens if we say A and B are zero and we do A divided by zero? What do you get then? Well, we learned that uh, another number other than zero divided by zero gives infinity but zero divided by zero is actually called an indeterminate form. It's a little bit different. Um, and it gives you another special value, print C, called NAN, which stands for not a number. This again is just another series of, like a, an, another pattern of bits that the people who made the floating point spec decided would be a special number. And usually if you see NAN in your code, if it turns up in your floating points, it means you've done something wrong. Like dividing by zero can kind of sort of happen sometimes in a lot of algorithms, but zero by zero, that should probably never happen. And if you do that, it, it makes absolutely no sense and you should get an, a, just an erroneous result. And that's what NAN is. Now, how do you detect if you have an NAN? Well, NAN is the only bit value that if you compare it to itself, it will tell you that it's not equal to itself. So I said, if C equals C and C has NAN in it, and that should be true all of the time, and it will be true for any other number except NANs. And so this is a way that you can use to detect if NANs are in your code or NANs as they're called sometimes. You can use assert equals, assert C equals C. C is equivalent to C. Um, and because C is NAN, this assert will fail. Bam. It gave me a, um, like, here's the stack trace and it, it basically, the program's about to die now because the program is in an inconsistent state where I did something wrong, I divided zero by zero. And that's not allowed. So that's the special of values and operations and floating point numbers. Um, next week, we're going to get into, or right now, if you're watching the stream, we are going to get into root finding, which is the first actual numerical analysis stuff that we're going to do. I'll see you then.